Hi everyone, it's Donnie Lowy at CloseThatExplosion.com. I hope you're having an amazing day today. So many of my customers ask me, what are good products to export to Africa? As you know, throughout Africa, there is a resurgence in the economy. The countries are starting to develop a very strong middle and upper class. Corruption is being weeded out. The economies are developing, and I believe this is a good opportunity, a good time to sell brand name merchandise from the United States to Africa. But the first question is, what kind of merchandise is popular in Africa? And when I say that, more specifically, what kind of merchandise from the United States is popular in Africa? So for starters, we have to first understand why is the merchandise from the United States, why is it popular, why is it in demand in African countries such as Nigeria, Ghana, Zambia, Kenya, and so on? So the first reason is because there is an idea, there's an understanding that the merchandise that's being made either in the United States or for the United States is very high quality merchandise. So I'll give an example. Let's say there is a factory in the United States that's making clothing and it's making it for the American consumer. The American consumer has an expectation of very high quality merchandise. Now, so does the customer in Africa, but the reality is that the factories in the United States have sometimes more sophisticated machinery, perhaps you're using better material, right? If the customer in the United States could afford to pay more for a garment, then the quality might be better than in a, in a let's say in South Africa where a customer cannot afford to pay as much for the same garment. Now, both customers want beautiful high quality merchandise and both customers deserve very high quality merchandise. Just the reality is that the merchandise currently being made in the United States is generally speaking better quality than it is being made in other countries. Now there is beautiful, beautiful high quality merchandise being made as well throughout Africa, but I'm speaking in general terms. Now there's another reason why people want merchandise from the United States, even if it's being made in China. And it's for the reason that I mentioned before. If there's a factory in China, and the same factory is making dresses for the United States as for Africa, the dresses that they're making for the United States, generally speaking, are going to be higher quality than the dresses that they're making for Africa. And the, the reason is because the customers in the United States can afford to pay more than the customers in Africa can afford to pay. And of course, we're speaking in very, very, very general terms, right? When it comes down to individual examples, there are people in Africa who are making a lot more money than people making in the United States and vice versa. So we can't judge anyone on an individual basis. We're just speaking on a macro level, basically in a in a bird's eye view with the economy, right? So if you look at the complete economy of the United States, on average, people can afford to pay more for a dress than they might, let's say, for example, in Ethiopia. Hopefully things will improve and continue improving in Africa, and people in Africa will be able to also afford to pay more. But as of now, the merchandise that's being made by Chinese factories for the United States is definitely, you know, I would say better quality than the merchandise they're making for Africa and for other continents. Now, what about the actual products that they are in demand in Africa. Why are, why are there American products that are in demand besides the quality? So here's a good reason why. Facebook, Instagram, and social media overall, um, movies, Hollywood has definitely exported the idea, the concept that the American merchandise is very fashionable, it's very stylish, it has made American brands very popular, whether it's social media or it's Hollywood or it's even people traveling. You have many people who travel from Africa to the United States. Maybe there are people in Africa who have family, who have friends in the United States, and they've come to discover, and this has already been happening for decades, that the brand names in the United States represent really good quality, really good styles, and it's just become an in thing. It's become a very cool thing to wear clothing with American labels, to wear shoes with American labels, to have handbags made by, you know, with, by American brands, and so on. So there's a very big popularity for American brands, for American designers. Now, what specific products are popular? So of course, it's gonna depend on every country, and then every country has different cities, and every city could have different fashion tastes. There could be different brands that are popular, you know, according to a different demographic, meaning college students in Nigeria might want different brands than professionals in Nigeria, right? Uh, a banker might need a suit by Tahari and a college student might want a soccer t-shirt by Adidas. So you definitely have to know your demographic. Now I can tell you, generally speaking, I've seen a lot of demand for evening dresses in Nigeria and Kenya, Botswana. I've also gotten demand for children clothing throughout Africa. If your customers in Africa are bankers, professionals, you're gonna look for office suits, for 
dress, work dresses, and if this, but remember the same customers that need an office dress or an office suit for, for, right, for work during the day also need an evening dress if they're wearing dresses at night, if they're going to a fancy occasion, going to a wedding, going to a party, or they just want to look really fancy, you know, on their day off and so on. So it's always important to remember that even though the same customer might want a, you know, a specific item, right, because they're very targeted, but the same customer also has different needs. So the same customer might need a soccer t-shirt when, you know, he goes to play soccer or she goes to play soccer, and they might need a dress shirt for when they go to work. So that's the, you know, the key is really, you know, know your customers, speak to your customers, see what items your customers are interested in. Now, as far as the shipping, there are many ways to ship merchandise from the United States to Africa. You can ship with the post office, you could ship with UPS, DHL, FedEx, and there are also freight forwarders. Freight forwarders aggregate your shipments. Freight forwarders such as Express Air Freight, Corporate Messengers, Grand Bell. There's, I mean, many, many different impacts, many different freight forwarders. And what they will do, they will they will basically get a discounted rate from the airlines. Why? Because they're getting so many shipments, so they get volume discounts. Instead of, let's say, you just shipping one box with UPS or you know shipping one box with an airline, so you could have a company such as Express Air Freight, such as Corporate Messengers, such as Grand Bell, and so on, Impex, and what they'll do is they'll take all the different shipments that they receive, they'll negotiate a really good rate with the airline that they're shipping through, and then they'll pass on the savings to you. Now, one of the best things about shipping with freight forwarders is that they often allow the shipment to go freight collect, which means that the customer can pay for the shipping when the order arrives in Africa. And many freight forwarders, such as corporate messengers, offer door-to-door -door delivery, which is great. And now besides shipping by air, you can also ship by sea. And you could definitely save. I'll give you an example. Corporate Messengers, which is a shipping company that I use most often for my sh my customers in Nigeria. So what they have two options. You could ship by air, which comes out to about $3.60 per pound. You definitely have to check with them because their rates fluctuate. But it's roughly about currently about $3.60 per pound. And that goes by air. It takes about 7 to 10 days. It includes door-to-door -door delivery. Now, they have another option, which is by sea. Now, when it goes by sea, it could take up to four to six weeks. So it definitely takes longer. But here, and it's also, you know, freight collect, door -door, freight collect and door-to-door -door delivery. But here's the big benefit. When it goes by sea, even though it takes a lot longer, you could ship a lot more merchandise because it goes in a, in a what they call a barrel, but it's essentially a big plastic container. And you could fit up to approximately to about 400 pounds of clothing. So, in other words, if you're paying $200 to ship that barrel, and it's costing you about 400, it's costing about $200, and you're getting 400 pounds of clothing, you're essentially paying 50 cents per pound for the shipping. Now, it goes, you know, by the there's a volume, right? You could only fit so much in that container. So, if you're shipping clothing, you're shipping a certain type of clothing, you can fit more clothing, right? If you're shipping, let's say, baby clothing, which there's a lot of demand for in Africa as well, then you could fit a lot more baby clothing, and let's say you could. Fit suits right and if you're shipping dresses you could fit you know X amount of dresses so you could definitely you know reach out to you know the, the shipping company you're gonna use find out how big their the barrel that they're using is and that should give you an idea of the volume right how much clothing you could fit in and if you're shipping handbags or fishing shipping shoes and so on definitely find out you know how much you could fit in if you are shipping shoes and you don't need the original boxes that would help you would save you in the shipping the same thing if you're shipping dresses you know for all my customers when they request I take off the hangers I take off the plastic so I could reduce the shipping cost now, if you do have any family or friends in the United States, you should have them go to different wholesale warehouses, such as my warehouse. Have them also go to retailers, just so they could see what brands are currently popular in the United States, what styles are trending, to give you an indication of what might soon be popular, you know, in your, in your market, right? Because a lot of times, what starts out really popular in New York, then later becomes popular throughout the United States. And what starts out popular in the United States, many times becomes popular internationally. So it's a good way to stay on top of trends to know, you know, what is trending, what is popular by having your family, your friends, or even yourself. If you visit New York, or you visit anywhere in the United States, go to department stores, go to Macy's, go to JCPenney, go to, go to Walmart, you know, have a, have a good idea of what's popular, what products are out there. And, you know, there's definitely great ways to buy American products 
for the export market for Africa. And one of the ways to do it is you can go to wholesale warehouses, you can come to close out warehouses, you could come to wholesale and close out businesses like my business, closeoutexplosion.com. You could go to the New York Fashion District, you could go to the LA Mart, you could go in Miami, they have their own fashion district. And you could also do a lot of your shopping online. Now you could buy by the pallet, you could buy by the piece. If you buy by the pallet, you're getting a much lower price than you pay by the piece, but then you're usually getting an assortment of goods. And when you buy by the piece, even though you're paying a little more than buying by the pallet, but you get to actually pick the exact merchandise that meets the requirements of your customers. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. And my website is closeatexplosion.com. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Thank you for watching.